Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be doing a full restoration on this broken PS1. This unit was part of a console lot on eBay that I got around the holidays to kickstart my vintage console collection. Besides being really dusty and dirty, as you can see this unit doesn't power on. And a quick check of the power supply using my multimeter shows that it's outputting the right voltage at around 7.5 volts, so there's something else going on here. All right, let's start by opening this unit up. There's six screws on the back, one of them underneath the warranty sticker. Two cables to release the optical drive, a power cable and a data cable. Both of them just pull right out. There are no screws holding the shield in place, that just pulls right out, and so does the motherboard. Same thing with the bottom shield and a couple of anchors in the back. This is the easiest console teardown I've worked on so far. Everything's held in place by just those six case screws. Since this console doesn't turn on at all, the first thing I'm doing is making sure the connector is not broken. It is indeed delivering power to the board. Next I have my multimeter in continuity mode, going over all the fuses I can find to make sure they're not open. I was almost certain that this was going to be a loose power connector or a blown fuse, but it's neither of those two things. Visually everything looks fine on the motherboard, so I'm going to disassemble this power switch and take a look inside. I'm just going through a process of elimination here. More often than not, the kind of things that fail are mechanical parts, things like buttons, things like power connectors where you're plugging a cord in and out, things like that. Sure enough, I found a loose spring inside this enclosure. Let's see if I can manually close this switch just to see if the console is going to turn on or not. And that's the first sign of life. I'm going to see if I can rebuild the switch, otherwise I might just have to order a replacement online. But at this point, the repair is looking quite promising. I'm going to clean the internal contacts a little bit, as well as those two plates you saw me just take out. I'm going to pop him back in and see if we can get this switch back to life. That's sitting in there nicely so far. It turned out to be quite obvious where that metal spring had fallen out from. You can't really see it in this shot, but there's a very clear groove where the spring sits on the side. And there's a receiving groove on one side of this white push button. So once you pop it in, it all sort of just catches in place. All right, let's plug this in and give it a try. Beautiful. Just jerk it around a little bit, make sure it's in there really good, and it looks to be working fine. Okay, let's give this board a good cleaning. Next, I shower the board with 99% IPA and I go over the board very carefully with a soft makeup brush. Don't forget to show a little love to the ports as well. Controller port, AV port, power port.
Finally, I cleaned the disc laser with some IPA as well and the accompanying ribbon cable. Case came out looking beautiful. All that took was some dish soap. The one thing that's irking me though is those rubber feet. Those didn't clean up very well. I don't have ones that are the right size from this replacement kit that I have lying around, but I'm just going to use some of these for now and I'll get the right size ones later. At this point in the restoration, I'm feeling pretty great about myself. The fault turned out to be a simple mechanical issue with the switch, and a little cleaning and some careful reassembly brought it back to life. In hindsight, what I should have done was hook everything up and see if the console was actually working. Because as you're about to see, there was actually a little bit more going on with this console, and I had to disassemble everything all over again. I'm glad this happened with a simple console like this PS1, which is dead simple to take apart and put back together. There's a bunch of other consoles I plan restoring, and I certainly wouldn't want to go through this disassembly and reassembly on a more complicated console. But hey, isn't it looking great? Look how shiny and clean that looks. The jack mechanism is smooth, and the power button is nice and crisp. Looking great. I'm always amazed what a little spit shine will do to something that looks dusty and neglected. Here I'm preparing the shot for the big reveal and this is actually the first time that I tested out after hooking up both power and video. I waited and waited and waited, but nothing showed up on screen. The console was clearly receiving power and I could hear the disk drive spinning on the inside. Well, what I've done now is attach this probe to the video input signal on my capture card and I'm gonna turn on the unit and trace this pin back to see where the fault breaks, if I can figure out if something's broken along its path. So if nothing changes before and after this resistor, this is the capacitor that it came down to, still nothing. And watch when I tap the other side of this capacitor. Oh, something happened there. Let's try that again. And we have video. So this is the capacitor that's faulty. Right here. Nothing. And right here. We have video. So I need to order a new one of these capacitors. I mistakenly didn't hit record while doing the desoldering work, so I don't have any of that footage. I decided to desolder both the faulty capacitor and the one right next to it because I read online that that one was responsible for S video, and they were both the same rating. The electronics store in my neighborhood doesn't carry any surface mount capacitors. I decided not to order the exact replacements online because I didn't want to wait for them to come in. So I was going to make these work. All right, here's what I came up with. So this is one capacitor. I trimmed its legs and just kind of bent it like that. And this guy is going to lay over here and connect to those two pads. And the other one, I just had to trim its legs short and that one's gonna lay like this. So when I close it all up, it should not interfere with the shield. So that's the game plan for now. So I'm gonna quickly pre-tin these legs and pre-tin the contacts on the board and we'll pick it up from there. One thing I should also mention is that capacitors have a side labeled with a strip, that's the cathode. So 
I just reminded myself when I took the previous capac capacitors off that both of them were pointing towards this big chip over here. So in a similar fashion, these guys have a strip on the side as well. And when I lay these down, they need to point towards the chip over here. That's the cathode side. So facing me, the left side of both of these pads or each of these pads is the cathode. All right, back from the future. Here I am adding some flux, getting the pads ready for pre-tinning. I'll start with one side and anchor in one of the component legs before I solder the next one. Don't worry about that discoloration, that's just flux. That'll all clean up really well with some IPA. Perfect. Let's repeat. A little bit of flux. A little bit of flux. It's probably a lot of flux, but we'll clean that off later. Let's pretend those pads. Okay. And let's pretend our joints, our component legs. That's all we need. Again, cathode pointing towards the left. And I'm just going to get in here with my hands. Just spread these apart just a little. Okay, here are the two capacitors in their final resting place. So when you lay them down, I don't think they're going to interfere with the shield when I put it on. So I'm going to test it out, see if we get video. And hopefully, if that's sorted out, I'll hook it all back together and we can see if there's any issues with the optical drive and actually try and get a game working. Lights on. Nothing smoking yet. Wow. That's really cool. So the last thing I did was put on some new rubber feet to replace the old ones because those were pretty nasty. These are a little bit smaller, but they'll, they're fine for now. If I find some bigger ones online, I'll just peel these off and swap those out. All right, let's try again. Here I have Spyro the Dragon. I'm gonna close this guy up, turn it on. I have it on full screen. There you go, guys. 